So in this problem, we're told how large must the coefficient of static friction be between the tires and the road if a car is to round a level curve of radius 85 meters and at a speed of 95 kilometers per hour. So basically what we're trying to be, or what we're going to find here is the coefficient of static friction. So we're finding mu sub s. And so what we have here is this car and we know it's going to be, uh, right, it's going to be rounding this curve here. And so they're giving us some information such as the radius in the velocity. And so the way we solve this is we kind of need to understand what's going on here in terms of a free body diagram. So we know that the force of friction and the centripetal force, so there's going to be a centripetal force, right, going inwards. And so the thing that's going to be countering that is the force of friction. And so the thing you need to un understand here is that the centripetal force, right, which is defined by its mass times the centripetal acceleration has to be equal to the force of friction. So MAC has to be equal to the force of friction, which is mu sub s times F sub n. And so these two values have to be equal to each other in order for it not to slide. So when it says how large must this value be, this value has to be large enough such that it is equal to uh, its mass times its centripetal acceleration or else it wouldn't be able to round uh, the curve. So uh, basically, we need to solve for mu sub s given this equation. So how do we find the centripetal acceleration and how do we find the normal force? So uh, let's start with the centripetal acceleration. So they give us information such as velocity and radius. So I know a sub c equals v squared over r. So the velocity squared, keep in mind though that the velocity must um, be in meters per second because this is in meters. So converting this, let's do that first. So we do it up here. It's 95 kilometers for every single hour. So you should know how to convert this stuff, but one hour is 60 minutes. One minute is 60 seconds. So now we've got the correct time unit. And then we know that one kilometer is a thousand meters. So these cancel and we have meters per second now. So let me convert this. So 95 divided by 60 divided by 60 times 1,000. 26.389, I'll just round it there, meters per second. So now we've got the correct velocity, plugging it in to find the centripetal acceleration, 26.389 squared divided by the radius, 85. So squaring this value, dividing by 85, we get 8.193. And so this is going to be meters per second squared since it's acceleration. And so now you should notice we have AC. Um, and then notice uh, we don't have the mass and then we don't have normal force. But you should know that if this thing's just normally on a ground, it's going to have the force due to gravity and then the normal force going up like this. So if it's on a level plane, right, like it's on the road, and this tells us that the normal force is going to be equal to mg. And this should just be pretty obvious based on the previous units, but I'll show you how we derive that. Obviously, we're not moving in the y direction, so the sum of the forces in the y are zero, because if they weren't, we would move. Uh, so zero has to be equal to f sub n minus mg. f sub n is positive, so it's upwards. So f sub n just equals mg. So that should just be pretty obvious. So uh, basically, we have mac equals mu sub s times mg. And so we don't actually need to know the mass because it's irrelevant because the masses will just cancel on each side. So the mass actually doesn't matter. So the centripetal acceleration is equal to mu sub s times g. So dividing both sides by g, this tells us that uh, the required coefficient of static friction is equal to the centripetal acceleration uh, divided by um, acceleration due to gravity. So yeah. So this is actually going to be for all of them. So if you have a, a curve problem like this, just know it's this. So uh, yeah, so we have 8.193 divided by 9.8. Let's go ahead and do that. So 0.836, we'll say. 0.836, and then it's about 0.84. But yeah, so good check is we know we're right, or we're in the right direction because it's uh, between 0 and 1. So 0.84, that's going to be the required or how big the coefficient of static friction must be in order for it 
to uh, go around this curve like this, right? To round this level curve. Uh, but yeah, so just keep in mind, the, the main idea for this problem was setting the coefficient of static friction equal to uh, the centripetal force or MAC. Uh, but that should make sense because it's going to pull you in and then this force has to counter it for it to be able to go. Uh, but yeah, so 0.84, that's going to go ahead and be your answer. And hopefully you uh, found this useful.